This video is sponsored by Epic Game Store. What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One and welcome to my former building guide for this month's Hall of Forms featuring Legendary Nana, Riam Reinhardt, Tina and Laura. We're gonna be having skills up to the Ictanir and Hathorn banner, just like the Awakening Revival Hall of Forms, so nothing really changes. And Legendary Nana is gonna be the star of this patch as she is gonna be due for a Weapon Refine and Remix in a couple of months around February or March 2025. So that's when she does have the potential to become a lot better and she was and still is one of the more unique units because of her weapon. So Lance Sword gives her plus 3 attack and in the combat she's able to get plus 6 attack and speed which is not much by the modern standards and then it has got half null follow up built in the offensive half and she has got the full damage reduction piercing and then she also disables foes defensive specials like Miracle, Pavis, Godlike Reflexes and stuff like that. So this can definitely be helpful against the shield fighter uh, safe tanks that you might be facing. But keep in mind that we have got specials like Gust, Armored, Blaze and stuff like that which is going to be having the unpierceable damage reduction. So she's not able to pierce that and she's also not able to pierce the non-special miracles which we even see on a free to play unit like Marnie. So hopefully this could get better with her refine and then she has got the 7 HP healing after the combat. She does have her preferred skill in Hothar's Zeal which is going to be giving her the new trace effect and she also gets true damage based on 20% of her attack and then she has got the dispersion built in so she's mainly going to be functioning in the player phase. And before we go further I want to thank the sponsor of this video Epic Games Store. So Genshin Impact needs no introduction, it's a massive open world RPG where you can explore the world of Tevat, mastering elemental powers, battling enemies and uncovering mysteries. It's available cross-platform including PC, so you can easily pick up where you left off no matter which device you're on. And now we have got the new patch 5.0 where you could meet 5 star characters like Mulani and Kinich and there's also Kachina as a 4 star character. And you can enjoy the free 5 star character rewards and extra free pulls. Plus don't miss out on the brand new Natlin Archon quest where it is unlocked once you finish the Liyue Archon storyline so there's plenty to dive into for both new and returning players. So click the link in the description to download Genshin Impact on the Epic Games Store today and don't forget to use the bundle code Epic Genshin 2024 to receive 5 heroes wit, 5 mystic enhancement or 30,000 Mora, 5 Glittering Gemstones, 5 Hot Spring O'Clock, and 5 Puff Pops. Plus, with every purchase, you'll be earning back 5% with Epic Rewards. And now let's get back to our video. I really like Legendary Nana. Even last year when Lucia came out, she was one of the ways of checking her. But with the time, she just is not able to keep up because she is not fast enough, so she's not able to double a lot of the units which is needed as a player phase nuke and her damage output is also kind of lacking despite the true damage that she's able to get out of her slot B skill. So hopefully that could get fixed up when she gets the refine and remix. So that is going to be a refine gamble that you'll have to take with her and she is going to be running ruptured sky over no quarter because she already has the full damage reduction piercing with her weapon. So no quarter is not needed and ruptured sky is just a better special as it's low cooldown and it can help you with the arena scoring and also against the dragon and beast units when her damage output gets better. Emblem Celica could be used so that she can warp and hopefully get a bit of extra damage and you could also run her with Flared Sparrow as her slotty skill because she's going to be mainly functioning in the player phase with her Desperation slotty skill. So getting the pre-combat damage is going to be helping you. You could even run Verge of Death if you're not able to get Flared Sparrow because at least you're going to be able to get the cleansing out of it and Attack Speed Clash can also give you the Attack and Speed Debuff Neutralization but I feel like she's going to be getting that as a remix skill. And Attack Speed XL is also an option in case they make her a bit more of a mixed phase unit so there the flat damage reduction can help but if she's just going to be having the player phase playstyle then Flared Sparrow is going to be helping you and again you'll have to take that refined gamble. For her slot B, at the moment there's really no other slot B skill that you could try and get. So you can just pick up something for fun like Speed Defense Near Trace 4 which can give you the better Kanto or even Assassin Strike for the pre-combat damage. But you're just going to be using her preferred slot B skill most of the time even before her remix and definitely after her remix. For slot C she doesn't really have a lot of options as a melee cavalier 
obviously Shadow Shift is not going to be available in this all the forms. She would have loved to get that, but Inside Attack Speed is definitely one of the better skills that you could try and run because it allows her to have better speed and Legendary Nana needs all of the speed that she can possibly get as a player fees unit, so this can really help you. And Fatal Smoke is also an option that you could try and run on her Slotsy because she doesn't nullify the non-special miracle like of Marnie for example and she only disables the miracle special so Fatal Smoke can help you against that but again I have a feeling that this also has a bit of a chance of being built in her weapon refine or she could even get this as the remix because Fatal Smoke isn't really all that good anymore because of Breath of Life 4 so be cautious about that if you're going to be thinking of picking this up and if you get really unlucky then defense rest smoke could help you in arena scenarios where you could set up the pathfinder for your allies and you could just retreat with a canto and hopefully with a remix she's able to get something like Canto distant traveled which would definitely help her quite a bit rion reinhardt is going to be the second rion Bina to appear in a hall of forms after alfred and he's going to be setting a precedence because this is the fastest that we have seen any kind of unit appear in Hall of Forms. So they just took 255 days after their debut in January of this year itself. So that is going to be defeating Grandpa Mycin and his previous record. So we could expect the other units to appear in Hall of Forms if they at least have 255 days from their release. And coming back to Reinhardt, he is a rearmed unit and it's not really all that great of an idea to get a farmer rearmed unit unless you're a casual and you just like to collect the copies of the units in that case it is completely fine if you don't care about the skill duplication but the thing with a farmer rearmed unit is that you're not able to inherit skills from them which completely defeats the purpose of being a rearmed unit when you get them and if you merge your invested and merge rearmed copy into the former rearmed unit then you're going to be bricking up your Rearm Dnet and you're not going to be able to inherit any kind of skills from them, even if you gave that to the normal version of the Rearm Dnet. So unfortunately, it's not the best implementation and they don't seem to care about changing it anytime soon. So that is something you need to keep in mind. But again, if you don't care about skill duplication, then I guess you could try and get him. But unfortunately, even in the solo forms, he's going to be missing out on two key things that he requires for his peak build which is arcane euphoria and far trace echo so you're not able to get any of that in the hall of forms so you will need to give that to him after the hall of forms and his weapon arcane thunder is a decent weapon giving him minus some special cooldown and plus five to all of these stats it also gives him special charges per attack and it ignores any kind of visible buffs of enemy speed and resistance and it does have the speed based null follow up built in but honestly, Arcane Euphoria is a much better weapon for him because it gives him even more true damage which can stack up with Thunder's Fist and also the other options that you could try and run on him. So that is going to be better for the damage output and that is generally the pick for Rearm Reinhardt. And Thunder's Fist is a pretty nice lot of option that he's always going to be running. So this can give you plus 7 to all of your stats and it gives you true damage based on 15% of your attack. And he also gets 50% damage reduction from foe's first attack in the player phase. And he has got the player phase brave effect if he has moved two or more spaces before initiating combat. So this kind of needlessly restricts the brave effect to the movement. And sometimes it can be hard to get that full movement. But still, you can definitely try and make it work out now with Emblem Celica and with the other tools that we have got. So getting the brave effect with any kind of weapon can be pretty nice. But again, the condition can be a bit tricky and also strict so if you're going to be getting him in the hall of forms then magical lantern plus is going to be the next best option that you could try and get because it gives you the unhindered movement status and also the special charges status so even though this is not arcane euphoria this is definitely one of the unique options that he can try and run and he's able to bypass his weakness to the trenches with the unhindered movement status so until you give him Arcane Euphoria, this could be an option and Flared Sparrow could be a fun option for Slot A, um, even if you're just going to be running Thunder's Fist all the time. So you could consider that. Resonance is absolutely the best Slot B skill that you want to try and get on him because it gives you even more true damage on top of his preferred Slot A skill 
and also on top of Arcane Euphoria and Fortress Echo if you run that. So it is really good and it also gives you the 60% damage reduction piercing which is going to be nice with the brave effect of his preferred skill and he also has the HP for it even at unmerged. So you could try and get this and if you get really unlucky then Occultist Strike is the next best option because again it can give you the true damage but you're not going to be getting the damage reduction piercing. And Desperation 4 can also be an option uh, to quad attack but a lot of the good tanks nowadays just try and run hardy bearing. So it could fall short and Occultist Strike and Resonance are simply the better options. For Slotzy, again being a Cavalier doesn't really open him up for a lot of options and he's not able to get something like even Attack Wave N which would have given him a bit more true damage. So Inside Attack Speed is pretty much the best option for the player phase and if you're going to be running him with Arcane Euphoria then you could try and get Odd Speed Wave because it is going to be giving you the null follow up and he can be self sufficient in that regard. Tina is quite interesting as an infantry healer and she definitely has applications in Aetherweight's defense and back when she came out she was one of the first few counters for the status effects and the prime skills. So she has got the Thief Staff which does have Dazzling Staff built in. It also gives her minus and special cooldown and Tina's speciality is basically stealing any kind of bonus status effects from the foe that has got the most amount of status effects and then she can give that to herself and the allies in two spaces and she of course neutralizes the bonus status effects on that foe. And unfortunately this weapon doesn't really work in summoner duels so her main competitive use is going to be in ether raids and specifically in ether raids defense because she's able to get this at sort of the turn and she doesn't really have to initiate combat unlike Nurgle but I would argue that Nurgle is just a lot better and he's also a better unit in combat and he can run Lagoo's friend and he has got the special jumping and hits really really hard with the damage reduction piercing so even though um, you know essence drain does require you to initiate combat most players are going to be choosing to run Nurgle and of course he works in summer duels really really well but this doesn't mean that Tina cannot also be run in your ether raids defense if you don't want to run Nurgle and you can also debuff the foes centered on her and three rows and three columns for minus four to all of their stats so that's also a bit of good support and then for herself in the combat she's able to get plus six attack and speed and then she gets true damage based on five multiplied with the bonus status effects that she has got on her and this could go up to max 20. So usually we don't really see that much true damage on these healers even on the premium healers so this is definitely good to have with her damage up but unfortunately because Tina is just so recent she already has uh, some of the better skills in her kit so there's not a whole lot that changes her performance but one of the main things that you could try and get on her is absolutely magic shield plus. So this allows you to get the extra action on Tina and also give more support to your allies with the debuff neutralization status and this also has applications in ether raids defense so you should definitely get this assist on Tina no matter what and glitter of light could be run as a special and with emblem marth it becomes a one cooldown special so I do like glitter of light a lot on the healers because of the flash status and for slaughter you could try and run attack speed finish which is going to be an upgrade from attack speed ideal that she comes with and it gives her more true damage with her uh, preferred staff so it's good for the damage output and you can also run firestorm boost 3 if you want to use infantry pulse with her so that is her other option for slot b it doesn't really get better than wrathful tempo in my opinion but poetic justice is an alternate option that you could try and get for stacking up again even more true damage so Rion Reinhardt and Tina are going to be functioning similarly just trying to stack up a lot of the true damage with the skills that they can try and get in the holo forms and I also want to mention magic and follow up as a potential option if you are going to be giving her an attune skill in the future because I think that we might get some kind of wrathful echo eventually and she does have good enough damage output so it can also work out if you don't want to pick up poetic justice and for Slotzy, she's unfortunately not able to get Firm Canto Curb. So Breath of Life could be the option that you could try and pick up because it is one of the best support skills in the entire game. And it can also help in Aether Raid's defense, especially for your save armors against the AoE specials and pre-combat damage. So it can be really solid for the passive healing, even though Tina herself doesn't really have the highest defense, but she's able to provide the support to her other allies and infantry null follow up is also a supportive skill that you could try and run on her so this can also give you the null follow up effect which 
a lot of the modern units seem to lack in their preferred weapon. And like I said, Canto Corp is not there, so the regular Canto Control is something that you could try and run if you really want to get that for Aether Raid's defense. Lara is the final unit out of this Holoforms badge, and she is a demote unit, so a lot of people are going to be trying to merge her up up to plus 10. And she is a decent dancer, even though she doesn't really have a perfect dance and she's not able to stand out. But she does have the HP that she can try and make use of and provide support. And she also has a bit more defense than a lot of the other dancers, so she can definitely be a bit more tanky at max investment. She doesn't really have the high resistance like Tethys, so she's not going to be able to make use of the sabotage and the ploy skills. But again, there are other supportive options, so only try and get her if you're going to be plus and merging her and you want to get her with the premium skills. Now, for the weapon, obviously, you're not going to be able to get the arcane daggers, but small spade plus is just in time to be there for Lara because it's a really good inedible weapon and it's kind of like mini arcane void because it also gives you the special charges on your attacks and it gives you a decent amount of extra offenses. So it's actually a pretty good option that you could try and run and I would definitely recommend that. And for the special, Lethality is of course going to be the obvious choice. And with Emblem Marth, Infantry Pulse and Small Spade Plus, it is not going to be all that hard to trigger Lethality and she's also not that slow. For Slotty, Firestorm Boost can be a pretty nice option for giving her more bulk with the HP and the Guard Effect. And the HP can also be helpful for making use of Infantry Pulse 4. So, it is going to be one of the better options and if you just want to get the true damage and the healing then attack speed finish is also going to be there but i do like firestorm boost a bit more and for slot b you have a bunch of options i think that firestorm dance is pretty much the best option because it's a dance skill giving the ally the desperation status and you also get canto one on lara so it can be really helpful to retreat and as an infantry dancer it's one of the unique things because you don't really have to run something like florid knife so it's really helpful rock slide dance i guess is also an option but honestly i think firestorm dance is just better with the desperation status and the dodge status from rock slide dance isn't really all that useful and if you're trying to run some other options then wings of mercy 4 is also really solid and you can also give her potent disarm and this can be helpful if you're going to be using her in etherate's offense and keep in mind that potent disarm and even Disarm Trap 4 are going to be in the Hall of Form skill pool for any kind of dagger unit. Even though the version 3 of Disarm Trap was never available because it was a game mode exclusive skill, but these tier 4 versions are an exception because they have other effects which are useful outside of Aether Raids, like the potent follow-up attack and also the half non follow up uh, for the tier 4 version of Disarm Trap. Speed Defense Tempo 4 could also be an option with the special charges that she's able to get with her weapon and it does give you the damage reduction piercing so if you're going the offensive route then it can work out and for slotsy infantry pulse is going to be an amazing option for the support with her hp stacking and also for triggering lethality herself and the other option is going to be infantry null follow up so that is also an option that you could try and get for the orders effect and also the null follow up status which again a lot of units do lack so it's also a valid option if you're going to be picking something like attack speed finish, but this is definitely the build I'm probably going to be getting on my Lara. The next month we're going to be getting a Binding Blade Hall of Forms, and these are all of the potential candidates in my opinion. Now on the surface level, it might not seem like there's a legendary or mythic unit that could appear in this Binding Blade Hall of Forms, but I think that Legendary Guinevere probably has the best chance. Now there's no explicit rerun of Legendary Lelina, Elamine, or Legendary Fae scheduled for the month of October, but I think that Legendary Guinevere could happen because she's going to be running this month in the Emblem Hero banner, and then she could immediately appear next month on the Hall of Formers banner, similar to Legendary Deidre. So something like this has happened before, and I think it could happen again. So Legendary Guinevere is not that insane in the grand scheme of things compared to a lot of the modern units and also the water legendary units and legendary ninian does have a chance of appearing in the blazing sword holo form and you know she's just a better water legendary unit so i think that legendary guinevere is definitely an option and for red i think that nabata juno has really really good chance because she's in the divine codes and she's one of the recent units and because we have got these thracia units appearing uh, from their debut banner to holo forms she's going to be having similar 
spacing. And Thief Cat could also happen because she was given out in the limited ephemera manuals and they have run Cat before in the Holoforms lineup. For Green, Murdoch could be an option because Marnie just blows him out of the water as a better axe armor and he's gonna be just in time to miss shield fighter in this hold of forms and they just absolutely love doing that and if i had to take another guess then bright cecilia could be an option because she's a four star focus and also present in the divine codes bright lorem could just appear because she's one of the rare dancers and noah could also happen because he's one of the recent units and deke did get a weapon defined recently so if they don't want to give murdoch he could also be an option I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support and you can click the link on the screen right now to check out my review of Marnie, our latest Grand Hero Battle Unit. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube's set boxes are about as functional as defensive specials against Legendary Nana. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.